I look forward to next week what those excuses might be, the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, uh, the Highland clearances, the Hundred Years War. Now, 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 pound and penny. Leave the royals out of it. <laughs> now, the question I'm asking here is, uh, after SNP's Deirdre Brock was bigging up her country she represents, Scotland, was our pound and penny turning into unpatriotic penny and running the country down? Thank you, Madam Deputy yeah. Speaker. And I too welcome the shadow leader to her post. And can I pay a real tribute to uh, her predecessor as well? Uh, and of course, it's a bit of a surprise to us all that the leader herself is still in post, hanging on against all the odds, especially the way her government is unravelling day by catastrophic day. And during summer recess, we all saw her on her latest leadership tour in Scotland. Madam Deputy Speaker, she can't stay away from the place. Two visits in one year. It must be a record for a Tory minister. Speaking at a fringe event, she characterised Scotland as a fierce and powerful nation being held back by the violent hatred of the SNP. In her reflections on the visit, the leader mounted a defence of the Union based on our poems, our rivalry, our blood and our brotherhood. Madam Deputy Speaker, we have no interest in being fierce, whatever that means. We just want the power to govern ourselves like any modern democratic country and build a fairer, greener and more prosperous nation. But I think I know why the Leader of the House is so keen to head north of the border. It's because when she's there, she sees a very different country. I couldn't put it better than the respected Oxford professor, Danny Dawling, who said this last month, Scotland is showing us the route to a fairer society and is helping to prevent Britain from becoming a failed state. Professor Dawling added, Scotland already has a lower proportion of children living in poverty than the most affluent region of England, the South East. Further progress on inequality has been achieved through the Scottish child payment raised to £25 a week. And finally, Scotland shows us a better way forward. In contrast, he's described the reaction of politicians in England to addressing inequality as being to promise only minor remedial actions with short-term impact. Now, the Leader of the House called me delusional when I pointed out to her previously Scotland's faster economic growth, our lower unemployment and lower rates of child poverty than the rest of the UK. When I told her that not a single day in the Scottish NHS has been lost to industrial dispute and that we have the best paid teachers in the UK. So can I ask her the next time she comes back from a day trip to Scotland, can we have a debate on what she learned from us? Leader of the House. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Well, I have genuinely missed these exchanges where the Honourable Lady blames uh, everyone else except the Scottish Government, which is the, one of the most powerful devolved uh, administrations in this world. But she invites me to tell uh, this House what, I, what I've learned in my very uh, pleasant trips uh, to uh, Scotland over the summer. I did learn that uh, Scotland has slower economic growth uh, than England. I was shocked to learn that Victorian diseases have actually returned to certain cities in Scotland, such as Ricketts. Uh, that Glasgow's rat problem is now so bad it is precluding bin men actually accessing certain streets because it's too dangerous for them. I discovered that the bill to Scottish taxpayers of the smelting business debacle stands at £32 million. I discovered that £33 million pounds that was ring for Scottish farmers has gone AWOL. I also learnt that the Scottish auditors have only been able to give a qualified sign-off to the SNP's accounts. Uh, I toured other parts of the, the UK as well. I, um, and in Manchester, I discovered, uh, the Honourable Lady would be interested in this, that Manchester police have been forced to issue a crime reference number following a complaint about the SNP giving uh, um, constituency seats for cash, and I also learnt that the Scottish programme for government uh, announced this week has a billion pound black hole. I um, thank the Honourable Lady for inviting me to get that on record. Um, the Honourable Lady seeks to blame everyone else for this situation me, the UK government, anyone else uh, that is around, uh, except uh, the Scottish government. A former colleague of hers, even this summer, uh, tried to put the blame on uh, foreign uh, agents of a foreign power infiltrating the SNP and taking all these terrible decisions. 
the SNP is never short of uh, a grievance, but it is now running out of excuses. I look forward to next week, what those excuses might be, the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, uh, the Highland clearances, the Hundred Years' War, the grotesque chaos and appalling public services her constituents are suffering from and the rest of the Scottish people are entirely down to the SNP alone. They are now a sad, spent force and no longer the UK's separatist party. That dubious honour now goes to the Labour Party in Wales. Well, 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 my lovely friends from Scotland and Wales as well, and even you guys in Manchester, because you guys got a mentioned as well, was our privileged pound and penny talking the country down. But first, what's your thoughts on uh, people who talk down this crumbling, rack and ruined, shitty rivered land, Rachel McLean? is an apology for talking this country down. Yes, I totally agree. And I'm now going to head off for a long, hot bath and scour myself with caustic soda to try and get rid of this tarry stench that's just suddenly washed over me. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, because I'm sure our pound and penny will really appreciate it. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel and enjoy stuff that's either in the House of Commons or in select committee meetings, subscribe, and just leave me to say I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends. <laughs>